make sure that City Hall is listening and addressing the needs of, of making sure finite public resources are being spent in neighborhoods that don't always have the ear of City Hall. Um, you know, I've been out door knocking in this community since March, and the concerns I hear from people are all related to growth. Um, people feel that we're not doing a good enough job managing our growth. If people understand that um, there's going to be development and people are going to move here, but that we need to be doing more to manage growth, specifically as it relates to transportation infrastructure and, um, and housing affordability. Those seem to be the two really big issues. I would say those aren't only the two big issues in this district. They're the two big issues in the city, and, and particularly as it relates to affordability and um, income inequality, it's, these are the issues of, of, of the nation. This is a, our, our region is becoming, um, it's becoming economically exclusive. More and more people are having to move out of this city. Fifth, uh, 10 years ago, more than 50% of our workforce was able to actually live in the city where they worked. Now it's 40%. In our, uh, in our efforts to focus growth and jobs in the same place, we're going the opposite direction. More people are having to commute from long distances outside of the city. And, and to me, really what, what that means is that we need to make sure that um, the folks that are benefiting from this growth are paying their fair share. Um, and I think there, we can find some common ground. The development is happening because employers are moving here. This is a fantastic place to live. And our common interest is maintaining our quality of life. And I think that's where we have to start the conversation about how we go about making sure that developers in this city are paying their fair share as it relates to transportation infrastructure and, um, and affordable housing. We need to make sure that everything that every, every development that's built includes some amount of affordable housing and every development that's built include mitigation funds for the transportation needs associated with that development. Um, I think you know we've run a really issue-based campaign since, since February, and that's been fantastic. But right now, for me, I think it's really important to get out the, uh, the message about the money in this race. There's a $210,000 independent expenditure campaign in this race, and that's more than the last three election cycles combined for all council members, and those were citywide races. So there's a, I would have to say an obscene amount of money being spent in this district right now. And we voted for district elections because we wanted greater accountability. We wanted to make sure that the people in this district were the ones making the decisions about representation and accountability. So, where does that bring us? I think it brings us to a place where if we want to make sure that this is not the new politics as usual, you need to vote for me. I'm not the person in the race that has these, um, these expenditures going to, to promote my candidacy. And I think we definitely need to send a message to the folks spending these dollars in our district that this is not going to be the new politics as usual. So that's my spiel. I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Otherwise, we've had, or at least we've had you here several times on our last over the last year, we have appreciated you coming. I know we had some questions for Lisa at the first uh, meeting. We have, so let's take some questions. Do we have a few minutes for that? Yeah. Ginny. I think so. Maybe more of a comment, Lisa. Um, I manage an apartment building mm -hmm. for my parents who own the building, my dad. Um, as an independent rental housing yep. person, I think that there are some real creative housing solutions that nobody is really addressing. Um, things like increasing ADU zoning, um, Portland's doing some really good, interesting things with that, that we're not even looking at. It doesn't seem like it's being done. <coughs> Tax credits for independent rentals, mm -hmm. older buildings. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's only for new buildings, it's only for new construction. What about us other, uh, what about us, uh, you know, old timers? So as it relates to ADUs, yeah. we are actually gonna be moving on that um, in December. There's yeah. the, the council asked for a report mm -hmm. on how to expand. Um, Does everyone know what an ADU is? That's where you go on units. Mother-in-law, mother <laughs> okay. yeah. um, And even though, so those were recommendations in the Hallow Report, and the mayor, um, because of the controversy around the Hallow Report, shelved mm -hmm. the ADU recommendations. But Councilmember O'Brien said, hey, no, the council asked for these recommendations separate from the HALA process. We're going to bring them forward. And so there's going to be a lunch and learn um, in December at the city council to work on that. As it relates to tax credit, we need to make changes in the state law to, to expand it beyond um, new, new construction. Lots of good creative housing things out there that is much better and, and more, uh, I think, 
effective in rent control. <laughs> yeah, I, not I'm not taking a position in support control. of rent control. I do agree that we should have a local control to regulate our rent in the city, so, which is different. <laughs> okay. I have questions for Lisa. What's the difference between regulating rent and rent control? It sounds like rent control to me. I mean, rent control is one model of yeah. rent regulation. But a rent regulation does not have to be the specific model that is that is rent control. I mean, that's rent that control sounds is the same to me, like you're controlling the rent or you're, you're like setting standards, I mean it just sounds like... Rent control, rent control is a much broader definition. It, yeah. it encompasses many different things, whereas rent control is a particular model that, that, that refers to a particular type of rent regulation that is a cap on rents. So the one, one type of rent regulation that is not considered to be rent control is rent stabilization. Another type is expanding the amount of notice that tenants get for large rent increases. Another kind of rent regulation that is not rent control is prohibiting rents being raised on uh, rental housing that has code violations or um, rent increases over a certain amount in the winter months, things like that. So the, the, the idea of rent regulation is very is a broad umbrella under which many different things fall. Does that answer your question? Kind of I don't know, it all sounds like the same stuff to me, you're controlling rent, so just, yeah. Well, it's like saying zoning versus single family zoning. Possibly, yeah. possibly yeah. some conversation maybe. Place. Last question here, Cindy. What you, what's your take on the new uh, department reorganization for DPD, the Office of Community Involvement and Planning? <laughs> you can ask me what, what, uh, what committee I want to be chaired in. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm standing by Roger so, Valdez, and I heard what they think is going to happen. <laughs> my big concern is that in trying to get rid of si uh, some silos, we're going to create more silos. I'm concerned that um, by having the permitting office <coughs> separate from the office that's doing the planning, we're still going to have a situation where one can't be talking to the other. So um, I think that we need to intentionally, in the design of, of that office, create some, some sidewalks. Would you have any optimism for the community? I mean, is it just labeling the pig again, or are they really going to come out and? I might, I might, I might like prefer it. the uh, the uh, rearranging the deck chairs yeah. analogy than that one. Yeah. Um, but you know, I know one thing that um, they're talking about doing right now is um, rather re requiring that department to be guided by joint planning of both the council and the mayor, um, <coughs> rather than just having it be your typical executive. Um, I, I will say that we tried, we tried that under um, the strategic planning office, <laughs> and uh, there was a pre predecessor office before that. And you know, it really depends on like, you know the people that you have on the council, whether or not they're really watchdogs. So, what that. committee? Uh, land. All right. <laughs>